not taking vow. Reason is that when you take a vow, even you keep one day, there's a benefit. Yeah. One is that one. Two is a, even you uh, damage the vow, still you have a sense of a guilt of, a, oh, I shouldn't do that one, you know? And so, so that make you uh, uh, more awareness of uh, yourself from. So even you, you broke that vow, still you have sense of, uh, I shouldn't do that one, you know, sense of guilt. So it helped. But when we never take the vow, first, we never plant the seed of the dharma. Second, and we don't have, when we make mistake, we don't have a feeling of guilt. So we do with the fully rejoice. You know, that is actually a much, much uh, stronger negative. Like a negative is, a, uh, is a become uh, a really strong when you do uh, continually, when you do with the, without the uh, regret, and uh, you do with the enjoying, you know, think that's good, and uh, you you do uh, uh, not, uh, without the, uh, seeing the faults of that negative, then it's becoming great, like a Buddhisattva. Uh, you know, training said, if you do any of those Buddhisattva's uh, training uh, break by with this four condition, you totally destroy the vows. So, so I think that reason, when we took, when took the vow, even we break, it's mu it much worthy than not taking. So, so this reason actually we should take whatever we can get, you know. Uh, uh, like Tuan uh, Ramboche said um, one time, if you plant the seed, even it's not grow, but one day you can dig and you can find back that seed. But if you not plant any seed, no matter how much you dig the ground, you're not going to find anything from there. So if you plant the seed, and one day when you purify it, seed is there, okay? But when you not plant anything, no matter how much you know you have a purified, but seed is not there. So, so I think that that reason taking vow and breaking is a uh, lesser uh, uh, downfall than without taking vow and breaking. Make sense? So that reason, I don't think so. You don't have to uh, uh, hesitate too much on the taking uh, like uh, empowerment vow or things. But then same time, uh, also you cannot have too much hope from the empowerment because empowerment is not CD. Empowerment is a permission. You know, like a, when you go to other country, you need to get visa. Empowerment is a visa. Now you are eligible to can go in that country once you get the visa. But visa alone, not going to see the, uh, that, that country. You have to buy a ticket, you have to travel there, you have to go there, yeah? Then you can see that seat, that place. So, so that way, empowerment alone is not like a, you know, something that you accomplishing something. Make sense? So that way, I think through the empowerment, those both are kind of mistaking feeling. So uh, <clears throat> first, uh, we have to generate the uh, altruistic motivation of a bodhicitta that I want to receive this empowerment for benefit of a migrating sentient beings because as sentient beings have been our mother kind to us. But, uh, and all of them, every sentient being, we be happy and peace and joy. But uh, uh, lots of time, uh, even we wishing to be happy, we engaging on the wrong path, of a, which is cause to unhappiness. 
you know. So lots of time we try to pursue the happiness, but uh, we choosing wrong wrong method to for that happiness. Then we creating the more problem. So so that reason essentially being are deluded and ignorant. Uh, because of that delusion and ignorance, we choosing the wrong path. From that wrong path, through creating more suffering, so there are lack of the method and the wisdom. So uh, today, I am fortunate to have a precious human body, and uh, <clears throat> I have a chance to uh, practice and uh, also uh, ability to practice. I think can say not chance. I, I have ability to practice Dharma. That one day I can liberate them. So the reason I want to use this ability as a benefit of, for the for, for the migrating beings. So this ability we we use it as an ability that is called the precious human body. Okay, uh, 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 this precious one in the Tibetan called the Rinpoche. Anything is a precious. You have to use as a Rinpoche. Anything is precious. Like uh, you can use your parent as a Rinpoche. You can call your parent as a Rinpoche. You can call your teacher as a Rinpoche. You can call uh, uh, three jewels as a Rinpoche because they are precious and they get great benefit. So, so, so that, is it. that is the reason why we call the human body is called the preciousness. It means something get great benefit. But you have the precious human body. If you're not using that precious one and you will not get any great benefit. So it's equal to not happen. So if not, you, you, you don't have a useful, the precious human body, then it isn't like same as you don't have precious human body. So, so if you don't use, if you don't use, then it's equal to not having precious human body. So, so I, I, we have to something that useful. We have to gain something that useful. Then it become a precious. Like uh, if you put that, uh, you know, uh, one, uh, one, uh, what call this? One break of the gold, break, yeah, yeah, yeah. Break of the gold one side, and one bone put one side, and you call the dog. Dog without the hesitation go toward to the bone. Because for the dog have no useful for the gold. Make sense? So 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 that way for the dog, is a, the uh, the gold is equal to the rock. Nothing meaningful. Because they don't have use. So, so same way, if you don't know how to use, if you don't use it, then it is equal to the nothing have, not have. So, so we have to use that one. When you use it, it become a precious. Having alone cannot become a precious. So we have to learn how to use, how to, because this, this opportunity, this, uh, you know, precious is a, not easy to gain and easy to lose. So the reason uh, we have to try to use that one good way, meaningful way, you know, how to meaningful become is a, that you have to use that when you die, you not die with a regret. You know, you die with a joyfully. Then that means that you use your uh, hum, uh, precious human body for meaningful way. If you die one day at a great, great, like a, even the uh, one day life, one day life, the end of the day, if you feel like a you know, re uh, regret of the, your life, your day. That means that you waste whole day. If, if you feel like a uh, kind of like a, you know, uh, what call this? Um, rejoice or happy, you know, like a satisfied or something for your, with your day. That means you use meaningfully, even you're tired. End of the day, if you use meaningful way, it makes you some kind of joy. It gives you joy. Uh, uh, even physically tired, it gives you joy. But if you uh, wasted it, then even you are physically really relaxed, you feel not comfortable. So, so, so that, that reason, uh, we've seen one, we have to try to think about our precious human body and make sure that precious is utilized without the wasting. So otherwise, 
is it equal to not having precious human body? You know, so that reason Miller ever said to hunter, the hunter guy, he said, precious human body is a really difficult to find, but not, not like person like you. Because he have no preciousness because he wastes a whole, he is this great opportunity to meaningless way, to especially negative way. So, so I think we have to think about that. When we said a, a precious human body, we have to think as a, our capacity, our ability, uh, what we can do and make sure that not waste because every day of our life is a last day. That day, that day of your life never come back. You know, maybe you are like 20 years old, maybe six months, 20 years, six months, like three days that the three days never come back. Tomorrow it become a four days. Make sense? So two days is never come back. Other, other job, like a making movie or, you know, things like you can uh, uh, rewind, rewind or redo, retake, retake. But life, there's no retake. So it never come back. That, that opportunity, the day you lost the opportunity, that never come back. Rest of the, your life. Every day is have a, your freedom that will never come back. So I think we need to think like that. So that then we can say, we can, you know, said, okay, I have a precious human body and uh, this I, is this my opportunity, this is my ability to use for benefit of my great essential beings because they don't have this one, because they are lack of this opportunity, they are lack of this uh, conditions. So uh, I think we have to think this is every day then, it, every day it slowly, slowly become more and more closer, closer to the, try to be live with our life with meaningfully. That is, a, what does a mindfulness mean? Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so with this motivation, we have to receive the Dharma but Dharma practitioner, when that's you that's receive, receive the Dharma or any kind of Dharma activities, we don't have that much uh, actually dangers of uh, gaining the negative emotion like attachment, hatred, you know, those things not that much arise. But uh, we have an easy to, uh, uh, you know, right, uh, arise, yeah? easy to arise and a really difficult to, to recognize as a, their negative emotion, like a, um, a pride, uh, not enough faith, not enough, not enough in, interest and destruction from the, from the outwardly or feel like tiredness. That kind of emotion easy to raise, but difficult to, to recognize. Especially there, one of the Dobokaji masters said, uh, uh, he said, for the Dharma practitioner, really easy to raise the emotion like a pride and jealousy and a really difficult to, to recognize them as a negative emotion. So that reason, make sure we don't have those negative emotion in there. Is, this is called the sixth stain, like a, you know, pride, uh, uh, not have faith, uh, not have interest, and uh, distracted from, from the outward, I mean the thinking something, you know, we see the, our body here, but the plane is somewhere to go. Maybe you thinking about the coffee shop, maybe you thinking about the restaurant, whatever, I mean, the, what are you going to do after this? You know, distraction from the outward, and distraction from the inward, I mean, the feel sleepy. Then, uh, then the last one is a uh, kind of feel like, oh, this is too hot. This is too cold. I'm too tired. My pain, my knee is a pain. My, you know, bag is a hurt. And this kind of like, a t it's called a tiredness. So that kind of emotion comes, then you cannot concentrate on the Dharma. You know, so, so that reason, when we are engaging on the Dharma activity, like a hearing, contemplate and meditation, make sure those kind of a, a stain, it's called a stain or negative emotion not arise. Otherwise, they are really easy to rise. 
it's really difficult to recognizing and have a really um, bad influencing for can say bad infection yeah in fact or our, our practice not influence and not impact impact yeah yeah, yeah impact yeah. Okay, so today <clears throat> we're going to have this uh, empowerment. It's called it's a chinesi, outlook the shora. Because outlook the shora have a many different kind of manifestations. You know, there are many different type of outlook the shoras. Uh, I mean, I don't think so. In Tibet, we have all of them actually. What uh, uh, you know, the all manifestations of satana. As a, I'm, not, I'm not sure we have a complete one. But uh, there are many of them, generally say like four arms, you know, thousand arm. Also <clears throat> within the thousand arm, there's many traditions. So uh, 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 there are many manifestations of the generacy because those enlightened beings, Buddha and Buddha Sattva, they manifest as so many different type of manifestations according to the disposition of the sentient beings. So this one is called uh, uh, Sihanada. Uh, because the Genesis was riding on the lion. So this is what happened was a uh, 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 Genesis, this particularly this one called the uh, uh, taming the Naga and uh, earth spirit, you know, uh, taming the Naga and the earth spirit. So that way manifest Genesis, this manifest for that particularly. So uh, in, in, in a long time goes, one time, Aulok the Shora and the Manjushiri were just traveling through. Okay, they ride on the lion and traveling through. Uh, so that way, uh, uh, so, so, so that reason called the Sihanada. Uh, that Aulok, uh, the, also Aulok the Shora and uh, also Majushiri, there's a similar one. <clears throat> and uh, it's, uh, it's because of the Bodhisattva that we're wearing many kind of jewelry, okay? With the, I, have, I shared the photo there and uh, jewel wearing uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, he, carrying the, um, like a, called the Trishul. Trishul is a three uh, shop of the uh, 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 kind of weapon is in the hand kind of a, uh, carrying. Uh, and one day also out of the shore alone and traveling around the ocean area, then uh, uh, he's carrying also uh, skull cup in the hand, skull cup and uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, or taming or overpowering to the spirit, especially Naga and uh, earth bounding spirit, earth, earth spirit, those. Uh, then, and uh, so then the Naga king called the Varuna, he transformed himself's body as a white snake. So then a uh, white snake is a the kind of like a, you know, uh, what called a snake? Coil. Huh? Coil. Coil on the trishul. What is generally carrying? Um, uh, and also, uh, the, the, her, uh, the snake face is it facing to the owl of the shore? Uh, yeah. Uh, and all other uh, nagas. Can you turn off that? All other nagas. Uh, man, uh, transformed to the, as a snake and uh, adorn around the uh, our Lord Shore as a body. Okay, so that is a, what is the main deities. Uh, and they also uh, praise to the our Lord Shore I said, you are the great compassioner and all, uh, we all, Nagas and spirit, go take refuge to you and please protect us, especially Nagas. Uh, and uh, uh, if there is a uh, dangers come to us, become our Lord or protector. So this uh, supplicate to the Aul of the Shora. And uh, this, so, so that, that is how this becomes. So that way, uh, this, this practice is really good for also 
you know, uh, when we're having problem, like a lots of disease and environment problems, so which are caused by the spirit. Lots of time, because of the spirit are unhappy with our behavior, then it causes us to disease and uh, many different uh, uh, environmental destructions. So, so if that is it, I'm not blaming everything is a spirit causing us because uh, um, I think majority is a, we create it. Okay, but if it's a happen by spiritly causing problem, then yes, this kind of practice can help us to, you know, uh, restore from that problem. Make sense? Like uh, uh, one time in Tibet, there is one uh, really holy uh, kind of like a holy kind of shrine. And the Tibetan people believe they have a golden rooster inside and sometimes people can see outside. So Chinese come and they dig everything down because they, I mean, they try to make everything empty. So that time, because those spirit got so upset, they huge flood, many people died and many farm destroyed. And the next year, I think same year or next year, there's another place they found really, really old ancient, like a 2000 years old, uh, what call this uh, cemetery, a barrier, old, old ancient. I think maybe those are like earlier King's cemetery. When they dig a little bit at the side of that uh, the place, there was also one flood destroy many uh, uh, farms. So then we have an oracle that oracle said, because you touch that one. That way the floods happen. So, so that way, lots of time, like hurricane or you know this uh, 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 mini uh, uh, environmental destruction, as it caused by the, those spirit get upsetness because of the what we did. You know, we we damaging, we destructing, we so so. I think that kind of situation and this kind this this like this practice like this really help us to restore and uh, make sure protect us from those harm. So, so that, that those reason uh, uh, this this practice uh, uh, and uh, this is a basically belong from the tantric tantric class Vajrayana, and uh, tantric have uh, four classes: action tantra, performance tantra, yoga tantra, and yoga tantra. And this is a belong to the action tantra. Within the action tantra, they have uh, three families. Lotus family, Vajar family, Tathagata family, and this is it belong to the Lotus families, same as Aulokteshwara or, or, or uh, Amitabha. So, so that is the history of uh, this Muhammad, that particular deities of the Sihanada. Okay. Uh, so uh, for, for, for the uh, basic empowerment, I think pretty much same. You, uh, most of people receive many time empowerment, so no need to be explained that much. But uh, here it's called the cleansing. Cleansing is a basically purifying, uh, cleaning. So uh, we have to like a uh, washing outside, inner and external and internal have to wash away or cleanse, purified. So especially. Uh, since we are inviting the uh, deities uh, in our, uh, uh, you know, f uh, body as a transforming to the deity, and uh, we need to purify it before, like uh, before you have a, a guest come, you clean the house, you know. So similar way, we have to purify, it in, cleansing uh, those rituals. So this uh, this is a particular mantra which help us to purify it. So, so, so with that and the thought of a, uh, that, that mantra or thought of that cleansing and uh, you, we do this uh, uh, Vajasatwa mantra recitation and uh, visualizing, especially your online visualizing Vajasatwa as a body producing the wisdom nectar and uh, which is the rainbow light uh, nectar and that nectar is a washing away all your outer physical body 
and also through the your crown chakra and it getting inside the, your body to in, uh, uh, you know purifying inner all the bodies so an outer in, inner and purifying with this uh, thought uh, then uh, with this meditation we recite the also same time we recite the a hundred syllable mantra then second is a called the torma to the obstacles which is a um, uh, basically um, just uh, mini spirit because of that their negative emotion condition they don't uh, uh, they don't uh, have they, they, they don't experience the happiness from the hearing or seeing the Dharma activities they become a more miserable so that reason uh, we need to uh, you know uh, offer them uh, this uh, food or torma and just uh, us request them to you know just go far enough to that you don't have to see or hear the dharma so when it happened when they go far away uh, it, what benefit is that they're not going to get suffering by hearing or seeing the dharma and we're not going to experience that their destruction so some people may think, oh, how come we are Buddhism? We have to be a love, loving comp compassion toward to the every sentient being where we don't, we, we send them away, you know, those are spirit are sentient being true. But Buddha, in, Buddha said, when, you, when you're not helping, you couldn't help them, then don't try too much. Yeah. So, 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 so uh, uh, also Shanti Deva said, I cannot help you, you cannot help me. It's just a better is to stay away from each other. So when you we cannot help each other, then best way is to just stay away each other. You know, you cannot help and still want to stay, you know, close and fighting, always it be arguing, always it be there disagreeing things, and only harm our emotion and also problem is the only come. So it's the best way is to just stay away when you so same thing is this is an act of compassion actually when we send in them away this is an act of compassion because we don't want to make them to miserable also we have a compassion to ourselves to make sure we are protect from the harm yeah so so i think this reason this is called the uh, torment to the obstacles but you have to do with a kind heart you have to do with the care you have to do with the compassion eh? Not, not with the hatredly, not with the angrily. You, if you do with this act of the offering torma to the obstacle with the thought of angry or you know uh, hatred, then uh, you're creating bigger obstacles than you had. You know, so so that reason uh, we have to do with the compassion. We have to do with the buddhicitta. We have to do with the loving kindness to and offer them the torma. So that is a, a best act of the buddhasattvas when. Things that are not working, then it's just part way is better. Make sense? Yeah. So that reason uh, we are asking them to go away. Otherwise, we're not saying, it's, oh, I don't want to share my dharma to you because uh, you are not good enough for me or you're not doing for me such, such and such. So I'm not good to share. Then you become a selfishness and a stinginess. That is not good. But uh, when you're not helping them, especially they harming them by the dharma, then it's better to send them away. So I uh, think this reason we uh, we send in those obstacle way by offering them food, torma. So torma is a really good for method to free from the obstacle from the spirit. You know, whenever you have an obstacle from the spirit, any kind of spirit, best solution is a torma then recitation of the Rathul mantra. Because the recitation of the Rathul mantra, you can harm them. A lot of people do recitation of Radhul Mantra to free him from the uh, spirit obstacles. But uh, you maybe you can free yourself from the spirit of harm, but you will harm them. Then there's no Bodhijida. Make sense? So that reason is not good uh, solution, not good method. You, you will create a negative karma by saving yourself from uh, obstacles. So shouldn't those are Radhul Mantra are not really useful for ordinary people like us shouldn't use them because you not see harming the spirit because your eye couldn't see but they will harm mantra power not your power 
because of the mantra power, you will harm them. You know, so then, uh, then this is really like, for example, uh, when you see the snake, yeah, you get scared immediately. Snake have no intention to want to harm you, make you scared. Because of the nature, it makes the scare. Same way the wrathful mantra have naturally powerful. It make them harm. Even you don't have intention to want to harm them. You know, sudden nature, you don't want to change. You cannot change the nature. The fire nature is a burning. Even you think that you want to make, your intention is you want to cool down someone. If you, you know, set up fire, it will burn. You cannot cool down because you cannot change the nature. So, so that way, wrathful mantra is a, not that good solution for the Dharma practitioner to freeing ourselves from the uh, spirit obstacles. So best solution is a uh, offering torma because you're not harming them and you free yourself from the obstacles. So, so this reason, I think uh, this ritual torma offering is always a comes and it's really handy actually. Yeah, no harm. So, so nothing wrong with that. Some people say, some people ask me to, why you do too much Naga Puja? They thought I'm doing Naga Puja to become a rich. You know, they nothing have to do with becoming rich. Naga is their animal. What they can do for us? They cannot give us anything. We are better than them. But we can give them something. That is Dharma. So, so. <laughs> Yeah, as I said, basically said, said, Master, I will do all that you have com commanded. Henceforth, I will be your servant and make offering to you. Please accept me as a, your dis disciple and enjoy, I mean, enjoy the some part of, a, of my offering. This is a, what really mean is a saying, is a, I will do whatever you command me. It's a, not saying it's a, you have to do everything what my, what your Master said. You know, if a Vajra master is a making mistake, you don't have to do that one. Actually, if a Vajra master is leading you wrong direction, you don't have to do that one. It's not going to break the Samaya. You know, lots of people think that is you have to do that one. No. L L like Jidil Sungun said, uh, if, 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 if your Vajra master say, teaching is a contradictory with the Buddhist teaching, you can choose as a Buddhist teachings, you know? So if a Vajra master is leading you wrong direction, shouldn't follow that one. It's a really mistake because, uh, and uh, uh, both of you really created the really bad, uh, what called a uh, negative karma, make sense? So what here saying is a, whatever uh, when I will do, all that you have a command mean that all the teaching what you taught me, I will follow those. So here's a, Samaya is a, also, we call the, ourselves, a, once you receive the empowerment, you become a Vajrayana. What does the Vajrayana mean? Vajrayana mean your ordinary body speech transform to the three Vajras. How to transform as a, normally we have ordinary conceptual of appearance. Now on, you have to see all the appearance as a inseparable of emptiness. Then it's called the union of the appearance and emptiness. That is called the Vajra body. And before all the sound are ordinary sound. Now on, whatever sound you hear, bird sound, water sound, you know, wind sound, any sound, car sound, airplane sound, you have to hear as a mantra. But not just only mantra, also union of the sound and emptiness. That's called the Vajra speech. Then before we have a thought, good thought, bad thought, you know, uh, you, know uh, you know, pure thought, evil thought, there are lots of different thought. And we try to be good. When we have good thought, we have a happy. When we have a bad thought, we get upset. Now on, any thought comes, don't reject or don't you know discriminate on them see thought as an emptiness doesn't matter what thought you can have an evil thought you can have a good thought you can have a pure thought any thought comes don't reject them don't block them just try to see the nature of that thought 
that's called the emptiness so so that this is a, what is a wajar mind mean the inseparable of the emptiness and thought so that is how transform from the ordinary to uh, called the vajrayana so that is what what is mean that we become a vajrayana practitioner okay so long as you do that when you receive the 100 deities empowerment thousand both deities empowerment still even you not practice every day anything you are not breaking samaya so that said that way said even you not do practice once you receive the empowerment and not break the samaya you will take longest one is seven lives to become a buddha if you stay that concept you don't need to do anything try to remember that all appearance is emptiness all sounds has emptiness you know all thoughts emptiness when you recognize it that way you don't need to practice even you don't practice one deity for day so you're still you are full time practicing if you don't have that concept even you 100 deity you do okay every day you recite the many mantras you do many deities practice and lots of people have this proud of oh my daily practice they do lots of daily practice never change themselves so you practice you chant the vajrayana sadhana but you never become a vajrayana because you never move from the ordinary that person make sense so you have to learn how to transit yourself from the ordinary to vajrayana so this is this this trans, transformation is becoming vajrayana just receiving empowerment is not become a vajrayana so that way jitendra singh said when many at the empowerment is a print in your heart you will become a vajrayana or you receive the empowerment so how to print the meaning of the empowerment is it this trans, trans, transmission trans, trans, transmission transmission yeah so that is what is the meaning of the empowerment print in you then even you don't practice anything you're not breaking samaya if you don't have this one this tree even you do every day practice all those deities still you are breaking samaya so that is vajayana is really easy but really complicated <laughs>